Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery and today we're going to still be working with motifs but uh, I got a couple of really cool things to show you guys. Your creativity will soar. So Alicia, Sandy, hello guys. Oh, Pat made it finally, um, which is great. Glad I made it this week. So are we. So are we. Um, a couple new names. Lorelai made it this week too, so thank you very much for making it. Um, and hopefully you guys have been keeping up with the videos so I don't lose you in what we're doing today because we are still working on motifs. But as you can see by my background here, that it is a little bit different motifs. So, Don, you haven't said anything. Can you hear me okay? Everything's good? You can see me? You can hear me? Yes, Don? Maybe he's not listening. Anyways, uh, I just always feel better if I get confirmation that you guys can hear me, that it makes it better. I can all see... Good. It's all good? Yes? Don shouted something from downstairs. It's good, Don? Yeah, I, I said it as soon as you came on. Oh, you just am I behind it. in messages? I don't see any of that. You might have missed it. I said all good right as soon as you clicked on the mic. Look, right here. I'll so, back up more, maybe. I don't know. It's yeah. in there. <laughs> All right. Well, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. As long as everyone can hear me. Yeah, my chat doesn't seem to be moving here. <laughs> so I might miss stuff because it's not updating. Well, let's get to the fun stuff. So you guys remember this carousel that will help you create them. Um, motifs because we want to make sure they start and end at the same point so when you put them together that they attach properly this is what we want um, if you're off you're gonna have a jump stitch and that kind of sucks so what I was focusing on today was lettering and how you can you know get something really nice and I came up with a few ways. Now, one of which I love to doodle, and I would suggest that it's probably a whole lot easier for you guys pen and paper and doodle, you know, whatever word you want. And that way it can be 100% original, your own, that sort of thing. It's hard to write like this with a mouse. Um, it always ends up looking a little bit um, wonky for me. So uh, I think writing with a pen, unless you have a writing tablet, then you could probably do it a lot easier. So, okay, let's uh, show you the work that I've done. Now I'd like to point out this is my ghosty, and I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple ghost. And I went back on it and I gave them nerd glasses just because. There's no reason. I just thought it would be really cute. So I did it. But we'll get back to that guy. So let's talk fonts. If your software has, you know, some really good fonts, especially if it has a single line font, then you're good to go. It makes it nice and easy. Um, it's not going to be original. It's going to be a font and that's fine that's absolutely fine so i played around a little bit this ended up being my favorite although i like this one a little bit and this one you know simple is best it really depends on the size that you're doing your embroidery right um if you're going to do it big small I would not suggest using the satin stitches, though, I think, unless it's just a plain block. I mean, that's kind of um, skipping with tradition, so to speak, um, making it, you know, not necessarily quilting. But if you want to do it, you can. Just remember that the, this lettering has a size limit, so you can't make it teeny. It doesn't work. So what I did, 
and we're going to go through a couple of them. Now I can see the chat. I, I don't know why I couldn't do that before. Phew, okay. All right. <laughs> I just, I felt a little lost without seeing you guys. What's going on? Sarah's here. Lila's here. Hello, Lila. Lila, you are going to love this. So what I started off doing is, because we want a nice single font, if, if you turn it into a line, it does this kind of a mess. Or if you just leave the underlay, it just doesn't work out as nicely as you want. Cindy King, the commercial queen, or king, I guess. Um, awesome commercial. Love it. What I decided to do was just to use it as a guide. Now, if you hand write them and, you know, basically all you have to do is take a picture with your phone and bring it in as a backdrop or you can scan it in. Any of those things work. It's easy enough. And I think your own handwriting would be really, really cool. Hi, Jackie Cheek. Isabel, yay. Uh, satin stitch letters are nicer when it's just one word. Yeah, I know, but uh, I'm just worried about people trying to make them inadvertently make them too small and then you'll have a clump of thread that doesn't say anything. So one trick that I came up with is that um, I just outlined it. I just used it as a guide. I'm going to change the color so you can see what I did. I had to plot it out a little bit. You know, we got to remember our carousel and we got to remember where everything goes. So let me grab the start triangle there and we know it can't end there. We know it has to end uh, at the end, I was going to say, but heck, that doesn't make much sense at the other end so that they attach. And what I like to do, if you're not using your carousel, is I like to bring down a guideline. Now for this, I just uh, left clicked and dragged it down. And that way you can make sure that you line up. So I did it from starting here and I ended here. And then I thought, you know what? I'd like a little bit more. I'd like to do a little bit more. So let me show you. This is, you can see down here at the bottom that it's text and you, you can do some things with it, but you're kind of limited and we don't need it to stay as text. So right here, right click and every software should have this break up text. Now, depending on what your word is, you might have to break apart or break, break up with your text a little bit more. And I thought this would be cool with, say, the letters like this. So not just a straight line on the bottom. Move them up. You could make that B just a little bit bigger. You can, you know, change a few things. Big would look... See, I really like that. I would maybe... You could even put them like this. So you get to play around a lot with your lettering. I think this would be great too, just kind of like... Uh, a circle, kind of like a circle. So what I did to go over this, let's do one together and you guys will get the idea. Oh, Alicia, if you use a Wacom pen tablet, then just do some freehand and write yourself a ton of, um, a ton of motif stitches. I think it really adds to it and people go, wow, there's a little bit of a wow factor there. Um, I think it's awesome. Ronag, hi Ronag. Thank you very much. I like that smiley dancy wolf there. It's awesome. So that is one of the advantages of having a pen tablet. So what I want is a running stitch. Now we can change the running stitch to something later if we want. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here because that's where I put my line. I think my line was for the other one, but that's okay. We're going to start here because we want it to match. And I'm just going to go here. I'm going to go all the way around. Now remember, uh, less is more when it comes to nodes. Now we want um, not a curve here, and we're going to try to double back right on it. So easy peasy, and I'm going to bring this down here, and we'll do a straight point. 
and then we're going to go up. Okay, so there's not many other ways that we can do this B, but we have to get it over to the O. So what do we do? We need to walk it over. So I'm going to make one click here and I'm going to try to match up. So curve, curve, and we're going to jump across to the O, not a jump stitch. Remember, this is all in one. Now, can you go this way and maybe a loop? Can you go that way and then again? Either way is good enough. We'll be able to tweak it a little bit when we're done. So let's try this. Just, just using the O as a guide, that's all I'm doing. We have to bring it down to here and we want a straight point right there and we're going to bring it up one and I want a curved point and then maybe we could do a little swirl here uh, depending on size this will probably whoops this will probably disappear you know when we're um, if we make it too small so let's another curve point and then I'm going to head right on over to this O. And this makes it really convenient because I'm at the top of the O and all I have to do is go around. So running stitch, get to know it. It's fun. Now we're at the end. We have our letters done, uh, but we have to remember that we're making a motif here. So if I were to end it right here, right at the top of the O, then the B is gonna start right there and it's going to look like a mess. So what we wanna do, you can do just about anything. You could put a little ghosty, but not too small. You could put, how about we just put like a swirl. Let's do kind of like a swirl and then over the bees in my way but you could move it over and we need to end right there so let's hit enter and I want it to start there and stop there and that looks good except for maybe my swirly so let's move it up so we can see how it looks and you can see I made a couple mistakes and you know what this swirly here is not good because it looks like boo too many O's on that boo um, so I think we should change that. Maybe we'll put it up here. So I'm going to make some adjustments and, uh, let's go into node mode so we can edit. So a swirly at the end is no. So I'm going to left click, drag, select them. You see they change color and delete, and then let's hit apply. So that's the easiest way of doing that. Let's move the end one here. And we can move the curve this one a little and make sure you remember to move your stop back there so that's a little bit better I also don't really like this one but let's let's start at the beginning let's do um, this one first so what is the mistake that I made here I think I am gonna try to add a point and then pull it up just needed another point maybe I see what the problem is a um, little too curvy there hit apply if you get a little lost in it that's pretty cool I'm okay with that now we have another problem because I moved the line up a little bit so we don't want to jump stitch so all we have to do is bring this up to the line and it snapped to guidelines I don't mind that um, and then just maybe put another swirl in it. I kind of like that. I think that's okay. So far, so good. Um, maybe I need to fix up a bit here. So what do you guys want to do about the other O, the first O? Because I, I don't really like it. And this kind of is how it works. This is, this is how it's done. Okay, that needs to change. That's partly why it didn't look good. We could pull these out a little bit. Alicia, thank you very much. We appreciate it all. Let's make it a little more O-like, a little, little bigger. They don't have to be the same size for sure. And this is where you get to play with your Bezier curve. See how I smoothed that out without adding a whole bunch more points? 
That is the fun of it. Now I'm going to hit apply because I'm getting a little lost. Okay, that is a much better, oh, I like that much better. Let's uh, move it here so we have it on top. So we also have to remember I left this part of the B without doing it. We needed to start right at the line. So everyone with me so far? Uh, I, I think it's not too difficult. Um, I'm going to zoom right in and I can see that this isn't quite right here. Um, it, it's a minor detail, but I do want to fix it. And you know what? I've uncovered the problem. All I have to do is change this to a line. That's the problem. And maybe I'll inflate the B a little bit or the O a little bit more. Ah, there we go. Sometimes you gotta zoom in uh, to be able to figure it out. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna delete it. I just don't like it. I don't think it works for our thing. Hit apply so you don't get lost. This one's gotta go. Well, yeah, this one here, this one. Yeah, straighten it out. Hmm. This obviously has to come back. Let's hit apply so we're not getting lost. Yeah, that doesn't look anywhere near good yet, does it? No. So let's just bend it down here a little bit maybe. Hmm. A lot of playing and it's a lot of fun. So we'll make that one into the smooth. And I don't know if we want to mimic the shape, the other O. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to. It can look how you want it to. Um, I think it would be cool. Boo. Put another B on the end. Ha 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 ha. No, don't please. And blame me. Karina would do that. Karina, where are you? She would do that. I kind of like the way it's going now. I'm just adding points and bending stuff around so it matches. I need to see how it curves out like this and around. That can be fixed by moving your Bezier curves. You will get used to them, I promise. It just saves you putting a whole lot of points. I would like these to match up a little bit better. Although if I pull it down here, let me see how that looks. It's so much fun to play. You can do that. I want this O a little bit bigger because I think it would look really good bigger bigger and better and up a little bit more. You don't have to worry about it too much. Kind of like a weird shape, but it's getting there. You can see we're getting there and I like it. And this is just one word. This is just one word. And this is because we're doing it this way. This is completely original, um, for you guys. Isabel, thank you very much. And you're welcome. This is, I think, one of my favorites. I, I love doing lettering. Um, it just kind of adds something to your design. I love it. So I'm liking how that has turned out. Uh, I need to do a little more tweaking. I'd like these to be on top of each other, but that's okay. Let's move on. And that is completely different from this and completely different from the one I did. Um, and I like it. I like it. I think that would look really cute. You can play around with it. You can tweak it some more or you can just leave it. So for this one, I took a different approach. You can see my little bridge across here. Let's move you. You are a big triangle. Let's move the green one too, because we remember what we're doing. I'd always double check the start and end points. You can see I'm a little off there. Um, so I would go back in and tweak it just a little bit more. Let's take a look at the path of this one. So I went, I started here. I started here where the orange starts, up, around, around, and I went up again. Whoops, I didn't mean to click on it. Up again, and around, and then here to the O, and you can see where the joint is there. So I thought it would be easy. Go up, and then over here to the other O, do a loop on it, 
and then I moved in to my um, ghosty, my nerd ghost. I, I don't know. I could have made them circles, but square's good enough. And this is I really like it this one I need the O's smoother so I could steal some O's from there and move them around but you know what tweak it and this boo even though it is from the exact same this is just copied from that um, it looks completely different so I mean why not um, so let's talk about uh, ghosty and then we'll go back to different fonts so ghosty, because we're talking about shapes, it's easier than you think to make a ghost. Starts off as an oval, whatever size you want for the oval, and you just do some editing on it. I'm going to make a copy of this, Control C and Control P. I'm just going to do it on my mouse because my keyboard's noisy. And let's move it here. So all we have to do is go into node mode. Now, this is an artwork. It's an object. It's not stitches. you got to remember to convert it because it's not going to draw it out for you, right? So it all has to be stitches. And it tells you right here at the bottom. So let's go into node mode. And this is a circle. And this is fantastic. One, two three, four points. And that makes the curves lovely and smooth. And then all we have to do is we need to go in and we're going to add a point and we're going to make a little wobble here for him. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm just going to do it quickly at first and then I'll show you how we can tweak it. And I'm just adding and moving them around. So add a point and then here and add a point and we're going to use our maybe one more, maybe. And they don't have to be even. I wouldn't even try that. Add a point and we can use our um, oval as kind of like a template to make sure everything's Okay, I did want to add another one. I miscalculated that in my brain. There we go. Now this one is different from that one. And this is what I love about doing it ourselves, right? Maybe we could make kind of like a slanted ghost. Hey, looking good. All I added was um, one, two, three, four, five, six points. And we took an oval into a ghost. Now he's kind of a faceless ghost. I actually really like the shape of that with one little part pulled down. Jackie Burke, thank you very much. Love these lessons. It's so much fun. I love to see everybody making their own motifs and playing around with them. So what's our next problem here? Okay, it's not stitches. It's only artwork and it doesn't connect from one side to another. So the easiest way is to do a uh, convert to, and we're gonna convert it to run. So however your software does it, make it a run. Let me check the size now, two by three, that's a decent size, it could be smaller, but with the way we've got it, look what happens when I make it small. Still pretty darn good, what do you think? still pretty darn good. So this is because it's simple, you can make it any size that you want. And that's going to be really, really good for, um, that ghosty is a bit, <laughs> who some, who some, yeah, he's pretty good. He's faceless, but you know, faceless is okay for now. I'll show you how I added in the eyes. So what we want to check here on our ghosty dude. If, um, now look, when I went in there, I could only see one. I only see the red. But look, when I bring my cursor to it, do you see that? I might be too far away. Let me zoom in so you guys can really see it. Because you might think, oh, where's the start point? It's underneath. You see how it changes? And that really helps out. So, depending on what you're doing, I'm assuming that you're adding 
the ghosty to the lettering that we'll do that in a minute. So we want to start and stop, but we're going to check on that after. So let's, let's bring our ghosty to our new boo and let's bring them up there. I know I have a ton of stuff going on on the screen. Oops. Now you saw what we're going to do next. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. So look at my cute little boo. Isn't that cute? Look at my cute little boo. I like it. And let's double check. We still got to keep our guidelines there because we got to remember that should probably hit it perfectly. And I'm going to go back into the nodes. Yes. And just a little off. So I'm just moving the stop so it's on this line so it'll t attach right into the boo. Now you don't have to make these one object at all um, because they'll just stitch out as one object. So I think we're close enough on that that we won't have any kind of jump. Hit apply because we changed something and that looks pretty good. Like I said, I would adjust a few things but we're not going to worry about it right now. So we know it ends here. So what I like to do is copy and paste. And this is what our motif is shaping up to look like. So here's the problem. Um, or it might not be a problem. If you like it like this, it kind of fits in kind of smoothly. You know, it's okay. It kind of goes through the ghost, but you can still clearly see. Um, if you want it to start, say, here, it's the same piece. If you want it to start here, then I just place it and we know our stop points there. We might go over and above, maybe. Yeah, let's try. So we know it's here and we can, well, I guess maybe, maybe like that. I don't know. I'll have to see. I have to do it and see. I play around. Once you get your points down, it's a lot easier to uh, make adjustments. So just just start and go on control. There we go. Let's see how that looks. And yes, yeah, start and stop. There we go. Uh, that kind of gives it a smiley face, maybe. <laughs> Such a cute little boo. <laughs> I I like the ghost I just made. I'm going to keep him and I'm going to make him a, moti a motif stitch in above himself because I like it. So then by adding this one little piece, we can delete this. This was just our trial to see. And we know because, uh, oh, well, looks like we have a problem. What's the problem? That looks like it's a jump stitch, and I know why, because it's in the wrong order. So if I just had just this on my screen, it would be really easy to find the right place. Oh, we're, we're kind of punny in the chat, are we? <laughs> He's bootiful. Yes, he is, except for his jump stitch. So just ignore that. It would be easy to fix um, because I have so much on my screen. It would take me a few minutes. So um, we're going to pretend it's not there. So let's look at the next boo that I made. So what I did is I kept my boo guy, my ghosty, my nerd ghost, I kept them as, um, you know, just as a template and I didn't worry about the start and stop. And I did my boo here, the way I told you, round and round. I came here and then I kind of traced over this guy. Or you can move your start and stop points, but we got to remember where we need to end. So always have your guideline. So, but then I went back, I wanted some eyes or something on him. So I went back and look, it's just here, here, here. Let's look at it in node mode. It's just a couple of extra nodes and it goes right across. And I decided it was glasses because you can't, you have to have this part to keep it going. Lila, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I just made... Uh, glasses because I thought with these extra lines it looks like glasses. 
I mean, you can have a nerd ghost if you want. Um, and that's all I did. So using the same ghost and then I was um, playing around with it because I do want to see how the two of them look together because um, sometimes it just doesn't work. So let's do copy. Let's do a paste. This is this is the way I do it um, just to make sure that there's enough space. And that does look kind of cool. I like this part right here. And then he goes on and on. So uh, Nerd Ghosty, I think he'll work just fine. So any questions so far? I need a little drink. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, this talking. It's only been a half an hour too. We got, I got to hurry up. There's lots more to do. So here's some fonts. They're just random fonts that I picked out and I have broken them apart. You can tell because they show up as satin, not as lettering. See, this one is the same as well, isn't it? Yeah. I probably broke them all apart to play with it. Now, I had originally intended of putting an exclamation mark in it, but no matter what I tried, it looked really strange and it kind of took away from the word and I didn't really like it. So these are the things that I tried and I mean, you can do this. <laughs> Time seems to be flying every day. It just does. What software are you using? I am using um, Perfect Embroidery Professional from Dime, but you'll be able to do this in any software. I just feel very comfortable in this software. I use, people ask, so I'll just say it before you ask. I use E4 for production. I use PE Design 11 for working with Ragnar and complicated things. It does, each software has its cool things um, that it does. And I use Embrilliance all the time on my Mac. So I just grab my MacBook, go upstairs and I can sit with my feet up and work. So yeah, I like all the software that I have and each has their, oh, and Embrilliance has the AccuQuilt um, stuff in it. So you can create your own embroidery using the Ac AccuQuilt die shapes. Also, even if you don't have AccuQuilt, it's an add-on to Embrilliance and you can uh, cut them out on your cutter. It says right there it's licensed to do that. So it's just $60 for a whole bunch of gorgeous applique shapes. I love it. So I kind of used this boo, the blue boo here, um, as a guide because I liked this swirly part. I like how it went like that. And I had to play around with it a little bit to get it how I wanted it to look. I like the B in continue. Remember, it has to be all continued. So I went, did the B the same way. You can see I came through here and then I did um, a square point here or a line point here. And I went around and then I did a little loopy. And then I did the exact same thing for this O and then I stretched it out because you don't want them too close. And um, I thought this looked really good. I think it would be nice stitches. You don't want it to be too small. Uh, can you have more than one software program on your computer? I have a big computer, so I have all my software on one. And I can use all the software and stream to you guys, but my my computer costs a lot of money. So yes, you can have more than one software. I also have Hatch somewhere um, and Embered. See, now Embered I use for packaging up the designs into a zip file to put them up on the website. So to me, I use everything that I have purchased just in different ways. Serious, digitizing, E4, playing around and coming up with this cool stuff. Yes. It, if you have a five-year-old machine, 
and it probably gets slowed down quite a bit. You might have to wait. If you notice, I never wait for anything. Everything opens really quickly, but I have, you know, an overboard computer. Not overboard for what I need, because the better computer I have, the clearer you guys see it. So it was absolutely worth it. This is one of those times when learning cursive writing as a child comes in handy. I know, apparently, um, kids don't do cursive writing anymore. They print everything. I'm like, really? My kids know it, but I think they were the last ones. I'm like, well, okay, I do have a solution for that. We're getting there. So another thing that I did is this is a pre-designed shape here inside um, Perfect Embroidery Professional by Dime. And I just did the same thing as I did with my Nerd Ghost. I, I clicked on him and I brought him into it. Now you can tweak this around, but remember you can't sell this because this is this shape belongs to Dime. So, but you can do it for your own. Um, so that's cool. Heather Will says, oh no, my seven-year-old is learning cursive already. Too soon in my, my opinion. I, I don't know. We do cursive in the UK. Well, UK and Canada are pretty close, but apparently they're not really teaching it as much or making kids do it like we had to. We had to pass writing tests and it had to be beautiful. But anyways, neither here nor there. You can print it, you can write it, whatever you want. So let's, uh, the, you could see that this ghosty dude is separate and same as the ghost that I made out of the oval, you can move your start and stop points and it will sort it out how it goes. There are, one thing I'd like to point out, there are a lot of nodes in this guy. I prefer less nodes, but you know what? I kind of took a shortcut and it won't make that much of a difference, but if you wanted to change something, you have to change a whole lot of nodes. So I did my boo. So this is my original boo. I put a little curve in it, go right to the ghost, and then he's going to stitch out and then right here. So I have a little bit of space in between because we really don't want this B to start right here because it's going to go over the ghost. So just a little bit of a wave afterwards. I played around with the wave on this one. And like I said, I played around with the uh, exclamation point and it just looked so strange. So again, it's still a personal thing. This I think is my favorite. And I think this little dude, aside from the jump stitch that isn't really there, is my favorite shape and I'm going to bring him in as, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to bring him in as um, a motif so I have him or just save him so I can bring him in on other things. So what I like about this one is that it's not all in one straight line and I think this will look really good as a motif. It's kind of spaced out well enough and I really like it. So, okay, let's, let's get a little more complicated and then we're going to take a look at the stuff. This was fun to make. So what is this? This is simply, um, a, a text. That's all it is. It just comes this way and you can do it this way. But just remember the only key to it, it's Arial Run. Um, I was hoping it would run down the middle, but it didn't. So I thought, hey, let's work with it. So the only problem is if you make it small, you can't read it. And I would not want to stitch that out. So mental note, this one has to be a decent size. Also remember when you hover over or in other software, look it up in your manual. It tells you the recommended side size. So 0 0.39 to 3.15. So I'm well within that range. You can see the height is right here. 
so I'm okay with it. But you don't want it to go too small or else you won't be able to do it. Now, the only downside to this is I had to do a lot of adjustments for it. I would suggest if you're doing two lines, which is easily, like entirely possible, do it two separate lines so you could have this one reverse because there were a ton of jump stitches here. Let's take, well, you can see the one. It stitches all this jump stitch, jump stitch, and then it goes all the way over here to the H. And you, when you're doing a motif, you can't get rid of that. So I moved stuff around and made it a little bit better. Look, there's another jump stitch and that's a jump stitch, that's a jump stitch. In between, you wouldn't be able to see them. That's just a couple stitches. But this big line here, yes. Between the L's, yes. So I didn't really want that. So I did some repair work. And then I ran into a problem. So it starts here with the H, it does the happy. And then I split everything apart so I could have access to the letters and I just manually rearranged them. So the Y starts, um, finishes here and starts at the N. And then it, we're going in this direction. And then I got to the first H and I realized I was ending here. It starts here and it ends here. That is not gonna work. That is not going to work. I have to point out that this is the same process used to create SVG and cut files on my Cricut. This information is so helpful and handy. Yep, that's same thing, same thing for something like this. Yep, it, it has to go, it can only go one way and it's all about nodes. With embroidery though, you got to know a little bit more about the thread and the stitches and all that kind of stuff. So you can see my solution here. Um, you guys should probably do this lettering and see if you can come up with a different solution. I realized I have to get it from here to over to here. And I just had a line before. You could do, I did some swirlies and around and everything, but remember, this has to be kind of big for, not big, but bigger for these to show up because you need to be able to read them. So I thought, hey, I'm going to go into the bats that we did. And remember, I made them into motifs. Use them again. Recycle bats. Why not? And the H ends here and it starts right in so this is all in one piece and we know how our bat stitches out because we created him and then I took another one and I just changed the angle on it and then you can see right here I left it just slightly off maybe you can't see it it's kind of just so I could pick it out this is where the bat ends and this is where my spacing design starts and it's not right on um, so you should make it right on but I just played around and then I just did some kind of swirlies so what I always do again I'm gonna make a copy let's go copy let's go paste because sometimes when you do all this you don't like how it's it looks it's too close it's too anything so you should zoom in a little bit better. So that's what that one will look like. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay. That's kind of neat, spaced out. Hopefully the bats are big enough. So before I save it as a motif and cause myself issues for that, I, I double it. If you want to do it again, just click Control V, paste and just see how it'll look. Now also remember when you have one unit like this, and I'm gonna delete this, when you have one unit like this, you don't just have to make it into a motif. You can move stuff around as much as you want. 
So I am going to show you guys the ones that I made. Um, usually what I do, I'm going to go to File, New, and I would copy and paste the design. So Edit, Paste, and that's the one I made. Zoom out a little bit. I'm going to check the size. It doesn't really matter, but that is insanely big. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And then all you have to do in this software is save special files, save, save motif, and then you name it. And then yet on another new file, I make a big old square and then I see what I think of it. Because sometimes you have all the best intentions and it looks really bad by the time you are done. So I always check and if I like it, then I'm really happy. So let's fill it with um, tatami stitches and then switch it over to motif. And then you can scroll down. And I made a few of them just to see. So Backstar, we did that the other day. Let's do the first boo. And before you click apply, please make it bigger. Um, because remember, no magic number, just 40 or 50, because it will take forever to render. Now that's too big, so I don't like that, but it came in really quickly, so maybe 30. And it looks sideways and upside down. What gives with that? All right, well, it has to do with the angle, so I'm pretty sure it has to be, it's backwards. I never noticed this before, but it's been doing it. Jackie Cheek, thank you very much. Apply? No, okay, why is it doing this? It has something to do with the angle, so just give me a sec. I didn't know you could reverse it. So I wonder if I'm having a glitch. You guys let me know. I wonder if I'm having a glitch or if it's if I did something wrong. No, they're all backwards. So dimensional won't do anything. Oh, it might be really small too. Let's make it let's make it bigger and see. Yesterday it didn't do this. There we go. It needed to be bigger. Just a little glitchy there. But uh, when you stand back and look at all these boos, doesn't that look awesome? I, I think it's fantastic. Now you can change the spacing. Um, I think it would be really cool if you move them around a little bit. Isn't that cool? I, I love it. Karina. Hello, Karina. Thank you. So that one's better. Let's look at the boo ghost, that, uh, the funny ghost. It looks okay. Um, however, the ghost is cool. The boo is a little small compared to the ghost. So I would go back in and make this boo lettering um, quite a bit bigger to because it just you can't really see what it is. You can see the ghost nice enough. Um, so I would tweak that one a little bit. But you know what? If you like it, then you like it. So I did that. And look how much better it looks. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? So first one, uh, Boo Ghost. It kind of looks a little strange. A little bit of tweaking. I could have saved over, but I wanted to show you guys. And to me, that looks way better. If you don't want such a big space here, you could, you know, do more of a swirly sort of thing. Uh, please please what? Thumbs up. Give it a like. Yes. Give it a like, please. Um, let's check out the happy Halloween. Um, and I'm going to make it bigger because remember this one, we have little size issues and wow. How cool is that? How cool is that? This is probably the best one. This is a little bit complicated. Um, but I think it would stitch out like a dream. I didn't get a chance to stitch it out, but I will stitch out some of them. That's the ultimate test. You don't have the okay until it stitches out. See it flip backwards again. I may be taxing the system a little bit. All right, we'll leave it as slanted. Sorry, sorry, computer, sorry. Um, but isn't that cool? Uh, I think that is 
probably a good size, although it's a little bit squishy on my ease. I would prefer it to be, um, that's even better. That's cool. How big is my square? Six by five. What about if we make the square eight by eight? That's a traditional, you know, quilt square. There we go. Oh, maintain aspect ratio. No, I wanted to eight by eight. Of course, it has to be a little bit smaller than eight by eight, but for now, we will just do it that way. And uh, let's check the lettering. It's pretty good. You can see here that's a little squared off. Um, instead of circles, it's triangles, but that's that's okay. There are a couple of ways you can fix it. Um, you can change the stitch spacing. I think this one still has to go a little bit bigger. Um, you can read it, though. You can read it. Um, that's just part of the tweaking. That does look better. So that would be in an 8x8 hoop. Because we made it a motif, it's going to stitch the whole thing out in one and I think that would look really good. Now, because this is so busy, I would not, you know, put an embroidery design over it. I would just have this as a block with that on it because I think it's it's busy enough. And if you're not careful, you might miss the happy Halloween. But that is as fancy as, whoops, as it gets for motifs. So you can practice handwriting. You can do different things. How about we do the process? Do we have time? Yep. I I really like my boo, my, my nerd boo. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste because I like how he turned out. I'm going to go into my design one. So there's nothing else here. So I can easily, you know, edit it and do what I need. Because, um, no, this one does not have a jump stitch. So I like it. Yep, I think it's good. Let's do edit. Nope, files, special files. And we are going to go save motif. And I'm going to call it Boo Nerd. Awesome. And it's going to save it. And then I'm going to flip into my next one. And I am going to select Boo Nerd. Boo Star, Boo Boo, Boo Ghost, Bat Star. I don't see it. That might be because I'm having, I'm having trouble. So... When that happens, I just delete what I've got because we want like a little reset. And let's just really quickly do it again. It doesn't take much to do. And usually it shows up, but not always. So convert to complex fill. Doesn't hurt to go over everything again. Motif. And hopefully he's there. Boo nerd. Boo, boo. Boo nerd. Boo nerd. Oh, there he is. He was there all the time. I just kind of missed it. It's there. That happens. And what I did here is I forgot to change the size first. My computer can um, process it. But, oh, I like it. What do you guys think? I like it. Let me make it, um, you know, orange or something bright like that. What do you guys think? Ha! I like it. It's my nerd. And look, the spacing is really well done. And I like it. I almost missed it, but I like it. See, I think that's really cool. You can be so creative, guys, with this. Let me see if I can straighten it up without it going all backwards. I can. A slight angle. And, uh, yeah, let's do it that way. How cool is that? I'm so happy with my nerd, my boo nerd. I really like it. Um, I like the spacing on it. Uh, there's an, Because I put the nerd ghost down, it makes everything so much clearer. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. I did that boo nerd 
um, just before I was working on it, playing around, uh, just before we started the show. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. You can come up with things. It looks well balanced. Yes, Heather, thank you. It does. Um, I think it looks really good. Can you imagine stitching that out? Now, I don't have any concerns about stitching this one out. I know it'll work just fine, and I know it'll look fantastic. So, the Happy Halloween, I'm kind of, you know, a little apprehensive about. And I also have to make uh, this, this boo guy, this boo guy. Uh, I'm going to put him back so I remember because I really like his shape, the way that turned out. So, yeah, make yourself some little ghosties. Play around with fonts. Practice outlining. Doodle your own. Cindy King, yay! I love your boo nerd. Yeah, he's got to be original. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's cool. Why have circle eyes when you can have nerd eyes? I mean, that's what I'm saying. So if you guys have any questions about any of this, this is, again, very creative. Hi, Carol. Hi, just joined. Ah, uh, we're almost done. <laughs> we're almost done. You're going to have to replay, I think, to um, go back on it. It was really cool. We just did a lot. Here is our end result, our Boo Nerd. So... Maybe it should have a space in his name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> then I'd be able to find it, but that's okay. I can always fix it. Um, so create boo out of a circle. Play around with your lettering. Practice with your running stitch. Don't just have letters. You can add more to it. Like I said, this one, I got it all the way up and looked at it in the square and it didn't look right. It does look okay here, but not when I do it in the square. So that's my process for it. That's how I double check everything because you don't want to be, you know, on something and decide you don't like how the boo looks. And you know what? All I did was this. I just stretched it out and put it back into its joining spot, which you can see because there was a jump stitch. That's all I did, just one little tweak. So I have something fun planned for next week. Um, think bones. We're going to play around with um, bones. Jackie Burke. Anyone know the name of Sue's video on digital pens? It is in the playlist of... Uh, Tech Talk with Sue, one of my favorite things to do, and you'll be able to see it. There's more than one video. I shoot digitizing with um, Wacom and stuff like that, so yeah, for sure. Um, looks great. We'll definitely try this lesson. I can't wait to see what you guys have. Remember your sizing. Um, balance is important, but anything else goes. So, um have a ton of fun and I'll see you guys on Saturday for the next video. Bye everyone!